Good morning, everybody. Uh, I've just gone to mix up some Rapashi uh, Soylent Green with some peas for uh, the fish room. And uh, this is a good example of uh, how awake I am feeling this morning. I have just put some peas in my coffee. <laughs> okay, cool. Right, so we've got another coffee made. Um, and then I'm trying something new today. I was just going to feed them some mushrooms uh, and I was just going to tear the mushrooms up into the uh, Rapashi, uh, which I have done with the um, like stalk bits. Um, but then I've actually just poured some rapashi into them, so the fish have got uh, stuffed mushrooms today. Um, so once this is set, I'll probably just slice this up, and then we'll probably have like some sort of like jelly-filled centre with like the mushroom on the outside, which maybe they will like. And then, yep, just the rapashi and peas and mushroom bits um, in the rapashi soylent green um, in our Pringle Pot lids. Woohoo! <laughs> Back to the discus tank. So I just layered up a bunch of branches down the back, just sort of resting them on the waterfall and down the back of the tank to blend everything together, just to start off with. I forgot to press record, but um, basically what I've done is I've just started moving some of the decor over from the discus tank. So I've moved the uh, fake plants over and then literally just stuck the two biggest pieces of wood on top of each other. Um, and then there's a little bit of cork bark because there was like a weird gap here. So I've literally just covered that up and I will try and remember to press record for the rest of this. <laughs> and yeah, the trick is just to keep layering it up um, and eventually it will build up and look natural enough. Um, you're just sort of recreating nature in a glass box. So there's not really a, a sort of rhyme or reason to any of it. You're just sort of adding more until it looks how you want it to. What I'm doing here is I'm adding the sponges directly out of the discus tank. So because I am transplanting the whole tank, I've taken all of the wood, all of the ornaments and everything out of the discus tank. I'm also taking all of the filter sponges out and putting it in the new filter because these filter sponges are covered in the beneficial bacteria that was keeping the tank alive. And because they're in the old tank, I know I have enough bacteria to support the amount of fish that I've got. So essentially this is the method that I follow if I'm either upgrading a tank or if I'm moving it from one side of the room to the other or when I've moved house in the past. Um, as long as you keep the filter um, bacteria wet and uh, at a good temperature um, and you make sure that you don't you know, over clean things and all the rest of it, you can put fish straight in the tank even if it's had a 100% water change. Um, as long as you don't disrupt the beneficial bacteria, it's all good. There we go, so it's the next day now, and you can see what I actually did yesterday. The tank's cleared up really nicely, which tells me that I've uh, moved the beneficial bacteria over really nicely and uh, not disrupted anything. So now it's time to just add all the really small details to this tank and really start pulling it together and make it something uh, beyond uh, just a normal sort of biotope of aquarium with a waterfall sticking out on top of it. So the proper term for this is going to be uh, what's called a paludarium, which is where the uh, land and the water connect. And then you can also get something called a ripiarium, which is where you just have a shelf attached uh, to the back of the tank. So but this is going to be a paludarium build. So we're going to keep moving upwards now. And uh, the fish oil can really settle. They're breathing nicely and very relaxed. So. What I've done to start with is I've just um, stuck my Monstera plant behind. Um, now, Monstera people are probably going to be screaming at me, um, I need to top the soil up in here, but I basically just spray this uh, with fish tank water and it grows really nicely, but I might prop it up. Um, but no, I've got this nice big uh, Monstera deliciosa, I think it is, a, a cheese plant. And now it's time to add some moss. So this is just moss that I found outside, giving it good rinse, make sure there's no critters in it, and you just want to fill in all the gaps any way you like with moss. So now that I've done that, you can just see, it just adds that extra little level of detail to the top section, um, and it's starting to bring some more height into it. So now I need to sort that light out, uh, which I'm probably going to have to suspend from the ceiling, I think. And all of this moss is going to need 
spraying every day. It will not survive unless it's nice and moist. So I will just keep spraying it down with the tank water. All of the bits in the waterfall will probably be all right, um, but it does like to stay moist and it's very hot in here. There we go. I think that's looking pretty good. Um, so I've got all the moss uh, on here and I've given everything a good lick of paint. Um, I've also painted the pond, uh, the front of the pond behind here as well, um, so that's not quite standing out as much. And I've got the light suspended from the ceiling. I did prop the Monstera up a little bit as well, just to give it a little bit of height. Um, but no, I'm really pleased with how this has uh, gone so far. I think I would like to add some floating plants at some point, and um, definitely some more botanicals, like seed pods um, and things like that for the bottom. But now let's give these guys some food. really big on their Corydoras and Aspidorus. Um, so I'm more of a Placo and Whiptail person. And aside from the Panda Corys um, and the Albino Bronzes, I've not really got too much experience breeding Corys because they're normally uh, with larger fish. So I'm always learning, always trying to improve things. So today what we're going to do is we're going to pop some leaf litter in this tank and we're also going to be turning the flow down, which is going to simulate more like the dry season where these guys are from. So in the dry season, the water becomes a little bit warmer, a little bit more acidic, um, and that's basically what we're going to be doing here. So I'm going to turn the flow down on their tank, and we're going to warm them up a little bit and uh, see if we can darken this water with some more leaves and woods and things like that. And then what I've also been doing is I've been creating some um, spawning mops out of uh, some green synthetic wool. And I went for a darker green so I could see any eggs, um, but it is a proper rich malachite emerald green um, you are seeing that correctly um, so but at least I'm gonna be able to see the eggs so you want a synthetic wool for this uh, mainly because that it's not then gonna be dyed the actual plastic fibers that this is made of are green so the dye is not gonna run or anything um, and this is really nice soft soft wool um, that I've uh, managed to order here and basically you just um, tie it together as like a little mop and the fish are going to hopefully lay their eggs on these. You can either attach them to a piece of cork to make them float or you can uh, you can sink them. I'm actually just going to chuck them in and see what happens. Um, and yeah, I'm going to pop these in with some of the Corydoras around the fish room and maybe some of the like Santa Maria guppies, maybe my sword tails and things like that. And just see if it helps um, give everyone a little bit of a, a hand, give them a place to lay their eggs as well as for babies to hide. Well then, yeah, we can do the same for the uh, stir-by corys. So um, these are on a centralised system, so I can just tighten this up and that will uh, reduce the flow. So we'll turn the bubble count down. So it's a little bit gentler. That might be a little bit too little. A little bit more. And a little more. There we go. So we'll turn the flow down for these guys, and then same as what I've just done with the Aspidorus, we've got our um, spawning mops, lovely. And yeah, I haven't attached any cork or anything to these, I'm just going to kind of let them float around for like um, those little sea anemone type things. Um, but definitely my stir buys, um, they definitely eat their eggs, so I'm hoping that if they've got um, somewhere like this to lay the eggs, um, hopefully that is going to limit the amount that they are um, going around and trying to eat them and we'll actually start getting some eggs out of them instead of them just laying them and then turning around and eating them straight away. So there we go, so I've turned the flow down 
and um, we've got some beech leaves in here I've just put some food in for everybody as well um, but yeah I don't know if these guys are too young yet but we can start prepping them and conditioning them ready to breed so I've got a nice stack of leaf litter in here which will sink overnight the beech leaves don't seem to take too long to sink obviously you can also use things like oak, apple, katapa or Indian almond as they call it um, jackfruit and mango leaves I've been seeing around recently as well and um, loads of different things Deci uh, deciduous hardwood trees is what I use so yeah we'll see if this um, sort of starts priming them towards breeding and maybe they will um, spawn on the spawning mops that are floating up the top here we'll, uh, we'll have to see how they go look at these guys these L15s are so outgoing now Lovely, lovely colours. They're so, so active. They're not bothered by me being here at all. And put lots of food in for them because they eat it so happily. So yeah, these are basically like an orange version of the leopard fox, to be honest. Orangey, sort of peachy orange colour. They're so much fun. Bless them. But no, we are taming up these leopard frogs. Slowly but surely, they are coming out day by day now. Um, and yeah, I had them all out to measure and then since they've been back in the tank they've all coloured right back up again so um, I'm not too concerned about these now. They're just a little bit skittish if I'm moving around the tank outside um, but certainly seeing them a lot more now. Now we've got our lovely little red lizard whip tails down here with the guppies. So I'm starting to run a little bit low on these now actually, um, but they're, they're doing really good. Um, I've just got them with like a big stack of dragonstone and some fake plants um, with lots of tubes down the back. Um, but no, they, they seem to like it down here. Super, super active. So these are the uh, red lizard whiptails, L010A. One of my personal favourites. These are getting towards adult size now as well. They're just a couple of centimetres off. And our boy Phoenix has indeed been upgraded. So Phoenix is a red emperor snakehead. Uh, Chana Maraloides. And yeah, he will eventually get nearly two thirds the length of this tank, if not three quarters the length of this tank. So this isn't his permanent home. He will eventually go into something much bigger. I've got about a year before he gets too big. Um, but they're super active emperor snakeheads. They really, really like their owners. They're very, very voracious feeders. Um, so yeah, he's finding his feet. This is probably the biggest tank he's ever been in since he was um, born. So he's really coloured up, actually. He's got really, really nice um, pattern on him today. And yeah, I haven't done too much by way of horse changes. I've just stuck a branch in here, mainly because snakeheads don't like big changes. Um, oh, he's stretching his mouth out for us. Bless him. So tiny. Um, they don't really like big changes, they don't like sudden swings and water parameters and things, so him just moving over into this tank was enough of a change for him. Um, and I don't want to fill it up too high because obviously they're jumpers and I've got a very heavy lid on this, weighted down with loads of just stuff, um, but I'm still worried about him jumping out. So the water's a couple of levels off uh, the top and it's probably the nitrates are a little bit high in here just for the next couple of days and I'll just keep doing water changes to um, clean it up in here gradually and not stress him out too much but actually um, Emperor Snakeheads they really like their owners very voracious eaters um, they don't play nice, nicely with others at all um, sometimes you get them and they'll be alright but in my experience Snakeheads tend to be alright with their tank mates for like 12 to 18 months and then they'll snap like they can be fine with their tank mates for literally years um, and then suddenly they will snap. So I just choose not to keep them with tank mates anymore. Um, but no, little Phoenix, he is going to be a complete liability. It's going to get nearly three foot long. Um, but for now, we can just enjoy, enjoy um, growing him out. And he's got such a fun little personality, such a great appetite. So I did actually decide to pop the Ember Tetris up in this L200 tank. Um, but. Uh, it was a nice surprise, um, but there was actually way too many in there, um, and there's too many of them in here for this tank now. Um, so as gorgeous as they look against these green fake plants and with the green L200s, um, it looks really cool, and they seem to be really enjoying it in here. There is like 30 of them, uh, so it's a bit too much in the tank. So I have shot myself in the foot a little bit, 
and I need to catch all these gorgeous little ember tetras back out um, and pop them in somewhere bigger where they can really shoal backwards and forwards and be happy. Um, but no, that was a nice thing. Um, the discus blast them, they actually haven't been eating them like I thought they had, um, but best to keep it that way and um, not risk it. So we'll, uh, we'll pop these in a different tank and they can um, live out their little ember lives. Looking absolutely stunning. I haven't got any lights or anything on this tank. This is literally just natural light from the um, Velux window directly above my head. Um, and they're just this absolutely stunning colour. Really, really underrated Tetris, Ember Tetris. They normally look so wishy-washy in the shop, but once you get them home and you get them happy and coloured up, they're really phenomenal little fellas. There we go, I'm going to leave it here for today but I am so pleased with how this has gone. Um, this has been a really fun build and just having this in the fish room is going to be great fun. Um, messing around with this, tinkering with it, improving it all the time. Um, so yeah, I would like to find that piece of bottom trim. I'm pretty sure that's going to be around somewhere. Um, I know the trim won't be to everybody's tastes but it is original to this tank and I kind of like the tank being original and true to itself. Um, mainly because they don't make these tanks anymore exactly like this so it's um, kind of a relic from a different time of fish keeping but I'd definitely like to get some more discus I'm also thinking about some kind of shoaling fish to go in here um, at the moment I'm thinking diamond tetras um, something that gets quite big and chunky and is really going to catch the light and you're actually really going to see it as you walk past because this tank is down low um, you are mostly seeing it from above more of an angle like this so the fish do need to be quite a good size, um, otherwise I'm just not really going to see them. And they've also got to be big enough not to get eaten by the, um, the butterfly cichlids and the discus. But no, all in all, I'm really, really pleased with how this has gone. Drop me a comment down below what you would keep in here. Uh, would you just put more discus in it? Have you got an idea for a shoaling fish that you'd put in here? Um, would you take the discus out and put something completely different in it? What would you do? Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.